Uh, Andrew says, heard a worship band lead into a hymn with the A part from Arkansas Traveler. Hadn't thought of using fiddle tunes to add variety to other songs like that. Yeah, that's a really cool thing that I hear some people do, but not a whole lot. Um, you know, you can have a song, um, and, you know, you can go through the whole song and there's a little break in the middle, or at the beginning, or at the end, you can put in a fiddle tune or a part of a fiddle tune. I recently just heard um, Olabel Reed, who's a great um, multi-instrumentalist and singer. Uh, she, one of her albums, I forget what it's called, but she was doing uh, Bonaparte's Retreat. Uh, part right now but she had a whole little song uh play the bonaparte retreat so she would like have a little song and then she would play the tune for a while very cool and they happen some in old time music where you kind of have words and songs but that's definitely something that happens more in like contemporary kind of folk music or in your case uh, that you heard worship music um having you, know, you can have a whole song that's not related to the tune but then you can put the tune in as a little uh fun thing in the middle or at the end or at the beginning kind of create a set out of it and have fun with it yeah it's a fun thing to do and some tunes will have that similarity okay let's see where else oh, chat jumped on me all right we have have dog will travel from south carolina good to have you here ontario canada oregon uh, double stops in the key of G and A. I'll get to that. Um, Savannah. Okay, another request for the double stops. I will definitely do that. Just catching up through all the tech difficulties here. Uh, how to do the mandolin chop. It sounds like it expands on the boom chuck, if you know what I mean. A little more melodic. Yep, uh, so I've got double stops, uh, chop chords, and then I think I'm mostly caught up. A guitar pick and mandolin. Okay, so yeah, I'll do a, do a couple of double stops here. Let me zoom into the other screen. Oh boy. So yeah, some, some nice double stops. So, you know, rather than going through like every one I can think of, what I'll do is do a short little lesson on like kind of what a double stop is. And so if you're thinking about like double stop for a G chord, um, the notes you're going to want are the notes of a G chord. So you have a G and a B and a D. So you can find all those notes all over the fingerboard. G, B, D, D, G, B. B, G, G, or B, D, G, G, B, D. So they're all over. You know, find like three or two or three on every string, and then you can add them together. So we have, okay, a G here and a D here. That's a nice G double stop. It's kind of drony. Or you could have a B and a D. Or you could have this B and then the G on the D string. Or you could have the D and the B. Oops, that's not right. <laughs> the D and the G. Or you could have the D and the B. And then you say, okay, well this one's kind of like this, B and D, and then D and B. Oh, sorry. B and G, and then D and B, and you can maybe find some little passing double stop in between that's related to one of them. You can do the same thing on the next string, G and B, G and D, uh, B and D. Um, so kind of going through on every string, you're going to have a bunch, 
Uh, and then if you say you need a C chord, you're going to go C, E, G, find all your C, E, G, find some nice C double stop. And then find your way between them. And then the, so the same thing happens with A, A, C sharp, E. You gotta know your kind of what makes up a chord, what makes up an arpeggio. Things like that. So I think if you can get, you know, it's, it's a little, um, it's a, it's got a little bit of a hump you gotta get over just to sort of get those ideas into your head. But once you have a sense, you'll start to really find all of these patterns underneath your fingers. Things will sound. Um, start sounding good and you'll start to kind of make sense of the fretboard in that way and you won't have to think as hard about like okay this is specific to G or D or A because the mandolin is so kind of parallel across the strings you can use a lot of the same ideas just by moving up or down a fret or string and uh, so I hope that's helpful there's some lessons on my website on double stops that sort of thing. Again, pick two strings, see if you can find a bunch of different double stop shapes and kind of work through it. And then once you start kind of having the ability to create your own double stops, that really opens up the world of, uh, um, you know, kind of figuring out how to embellish different tunes and things like that. And you can also just use your ears. You know, if it sounds good, it is good. And sometimes your double stops might not always you know, this is a good sounding double stop. Open G and a B on the D string. Open in nine. And open in five sounds good too. But you can kind of walk up that scale. Five, seven, nine. And five and seven don't sound great together. But in context. You can get somewhere. So moving on to double stops, let's take a G double stop, or sorry, chop, moving on to chop chords, take a G chop chord, and there's a, there's a couple, I think, you know, the ultimate uh, technique behind chop chords is having, in really slow motion, it sounds like this. And getting that really clean sound is going to be a great way to get a good sounding chop chord. So you've got... All four strings, or as many strings as you're playing, you can just do two. You can do a double stop. Or you can do a full four string chord. I'll just do the classic G chop chord for the sake of the exercise. Um, you want all four, as many strings as you're going to play to ring out. And then you want a nice sharp ending to those notes by releasing the pressure out of your left hand fingers. You don't need to take your fingers off. In fact, you don't want to. But just releasing the pressure will mute the strings. And then in, from there, you just have to kind of speed up that process to mute more quickly after you hit the strings. Like that. And then from there, it just kind of becomes a uh, personal preference. Some people make a lot of sound with their chop chords. And some people make almost no sound, and it's mostly percussion. And I think kind of that, that bubble, it kind of expanding sound you're talking about, kind of comes from just getting that right at this spot where... If you line up your right hand and left hand coordination just right, you get this little, like, pop. Of sound and that really gives it that like kind of oomph behind the chop so play around with that it's all in the timing of the left and right hands and I hope you can spend a little time on that and see how it goes great questions though all around Miss Maddie says always wondered this but is there a specific difference between a guitar pick and a mandolin pick not really no uh, everybody um, has their own personal preference I think it's a, a great way I think I talk about this in a video I have on picks. You know, spend $5 or $10 on a bunch of different picks. Don't get anything super expensive. You know, get some thin ones. Get some kind of regular guitar-shaped picks. Get some big fat ones. Get some that are big triangles like this one. 
I can't really yeah there's a big triangle um and just sort of see what you like i like these big fat triangle picks on this mandolin i love really thin uh regular kind of teardrop shaped guitar picks on mandolin and on guitar uh really kind of every instrument i pick up i try a bunch of different picks and it often changes um i kind of go back and forth between using thinner and thicker picks depending on um how used to the instrument i am and what particular sound i'm going for and just my personal preferences change over time so try everything and see what feels and sounds best to you Recovering bassist says my ring finger lags behind the other fingers when I'm picking a fast melody. Not sure how to get it to be more nimble. I would say, you know, find that spot. Find that point where in your as you're speeding up, there's got to be a spot where if you're playing slow enough, your, uh, your ring finger is going to be able to keep up. And then find that beat per minute or whatever it is with a metronome um, where you really start to notice that your ring finger is lagging behind and stay at that point and see if you can just kind of push past that a little bit. It might be different from how fast you can like, it might be slightly slower than the rest of your fingers can go, but finding a tune that's got plenty of kind of ring finger in it uh, um, and figuring that out or creating some exercises. Um, and I think your ring finger will speed back up um, and catch up with the others you just kind of have to use it a lot the same thing with my pinky my pinky kind of lags behind everything else part of it is kind of realizing that and knowing your pinky is, or whatever the finger may be needs a little more time to get there so maybe you have to start that movement a little early know it's coming and also just using it a lot will strengthen those muscles and uh, speed up that reflex Michael thank you so much for the super chat donation I appreciate it Helps me continue making things like this, even when they're riddled with technical problems. <laughs> All right, Stephen from Charlotte. Good to see you. Uh, any idea why a stringed instrument can go sharp when sitting overnight? Is it humidity? Otherwise, it makes more sense when having played and sitting go flat. Okay, I see what you're saying. So yeah, sometimes you'll pick up a mandolin. I think it mostly has to do with humidity. Sometimes it can have to do with like the way the, the nut slot is, slot is caught, cut, nut slot is cut, or the bridge slots. Um, and if it's like grabbing and grabbing the string slightly, um, it'll sort of build up more tension here and it'll pull it sharp. But usually it's just humidity or temperature, uh, something that's going to make this the wood expand and contract. Um, it's totally normal. And I don't know why. You know, sometimes they go sharp, sometimes they go flat. You never know which way it's going to go. Entropy. Brilliancy, yeah. So, Jan uh, emailed me looking for some tabs to this tune. Uh, it's an old tune, but Sam Bush has a particular arrangement of it. And I don't know Sam Bush's exact, exact arrangement. And if I did, I wouldn't play it because uh, the, uh, it's his, not mine. Uh, and I, it's kind of a copyright thing. But... I can play sort of my approximation of his arrangement anyway. I'll zoom in on the uh, close-up screen here. You can see my fingers a little better. It's key of A. It's kind of a fireworksy tune.
Couldn't quite get some of that high, high up fret work. It's got a little bit of position shifts, things like that, playing way up the fretboard. But it's a lot of fun. Uh, oh, multiple requests for Soldier's Joy. Yeah, how does that tune go? I know I can do it once I get it going. Soldier's Joy. No, that's St. Anne's Real. Um... I gotta look it up. Hang on, have a second. Soldier's joy. Josh. Oh, it's Josh. Oh yeah. Okay, there it is. <laughs> um, soldier's joy. <laughs> called uh so soldier's joy i can never remember i get soldier's joy saint anne's real and uh whatever that there's some other tune it's in g can't keep them straight uh, but great tunes all around great for double stops might have got a little carried away with the double stops but uh good stuff all the same Boston Boy. I wish I could do Boston Boy. I can never remember that one either. I, I, I think I learned it once, but it's been like 10 years since I've even thought about it. But i try to get that one back in my fingers. Thank you, Adam, for the kind words. Just saying he's learned a lot from the website. Thanks for watching. Glad to hear more people picking. What style is this mandolin? This is a mandolin built by Tom Ellis. Um, it's an A5. Maybe deluxe? I don't know what it's called. Uh, it doesn't say, but it's an A A style built by Tom Ellis in Austin, Texas. How you might chop along to Julianne Johnson. I know, or Mississippi Palisades. I'll do Julianne Johnson, yeah. So this is somewhere that I really would use, especially on fiddle tunes. I really just use like kind of two string chords. So I'll use seven and four as my D, D chord, seven and five as my G chord, and my A chord will be six and seven. So seven and four is D, 
7 and 5 is G, 6 and 7 is A. So, uh, uh, yeah, ba do ba dee dum ba 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 Something like that. And I really think, you know, with fiddle tunes, you know, the whole melody there. Uh, the whole melody is almost entirely on the D and A, uh, sorry, the A and E strings. And um, I think that's uh, by playing your chop chords down on the G and D strings, you're going to keep the kind of your rhythmic ideas out of the way of the melody up top. Um, and vice versa, rather than playing all your chop chords up there, it's the same exact range. You're going to kind of swallow up the melody a little bit. Great question, though. And that's what I it really ultimately that's what I do a lot. Especially you know if there's a guitar player and a bass player and somebody else. Like the bigger the band gets, the smaller my chop chords get. Even just with two people, sometimes I'll just. By taking away the number of strings you're playing, you can play more kind of rhythmically fun uh, things with your right hand. So if I'm playing, you know, I can like with Julianne Johnson, it's kind of half chop, half shuffle. There's a lot going on there. It's not just da da dee da 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 dee dum ba dum dee dum ba dum dum dum. And so by just, if, but if I did that with like a full D chord, like four fret D chord, like, you know, if I was going yeah little little da da little da da little little dee dum ba dum da da. gets in the way it's a little more kind of intense to listen to but really simple two string chords because there's only two notes and they're a little lower you can get away with playing more with your right hand and having more than just the offbeat chop what are those things above the nut and also behind the bridge um, of the mandolin. So these are just little rubber grommets. You can get them at some hardware stores or you can find them online They're called like harmonic suppressors. I just bought a bag of like a hundred of them from, it might have ended up being an online hardware store, but uh, they, what they do is they just stop the strings from ringing. If you don't have them on your instrument and you play either behind the bridge or above the nut, you'll hear this sort of jingling sound, like really high pitched stuff. And that's totally fine. It's, these are not something that you need by any any means, but I was having a little bit of trouble at one point with it actually ringing out a note. I think it was a B flat that I was playing, and then it would continue to ring behind the headstock. And I think it just kind of cleans up the sound of the instrument a little bit. Um, not quite as ringy. I like kind of having control over how much the instrument's going to ring. Yeah, ghost notes. Oh, well, it could be. I mean, give it a try. What you can do is... Uh, just get like a, like, you can use a piece of leather or a cloth or a napkin or whatever and just like dampen these spots and see if that uh, will get rid of that sound. It's, yeah, sometimes these instruments will have, or any instrument really, will have weird kind of other resonances and often it has to do with sort of something ringing where it shouldn't be or having to dampen something somewhere. Little Rock Getaway, I do not, I know the tune, but I don't know how to play it. Uh, very notey, <laughs> but it's fun. I've heard some mandolin players do it. It's very cool. When you press the string, the note goes sharp. That sounds like your nut is not low enough. You want that your nut to be really 
cut down so the first fret is very close um, to the string so you don't have to push down super hard to to get that note cool Shady Grove says get my fiddle tunes from Mando lessons glad to hear it definitely uh, my website is not mandolin exclusive especially with the tunes whatever instrument you're interested in playing I use my website for learning tunes on like banjo and guitar all the time um, just to kind of get things settled in there so whatever you uh whatever you play see if you can pick up some of those tunes from my website on there oh no go fish office is not feeling their best uh but glad you're uh cool well i'm i hope that i hope things clear up and you get back to plan it's never any fun uh Lauren says how can I donate? Um there's a couple ways. There's the super chat. I don't know. I I can't remember how to actually do the super chat. It should be like a button if on the thing, but you can also if people are interested in donating, you can donate through my website. There's a little donate button over on the left-hand side. It all goes to the same place. Um all greatly appreciated. So for those of you who have donated so far today, thank you so much. Um speaking of which, Matthew, thank you so much for the Super Chat donation. And, oh, Lauren, looks like you figured out how to get the Super Chat running. Wow, thank you so much for the very generous donation. And Robert, wow, these things just keep coming through. And Recovering Basis, my goodness. Great to have you all here. Thank you so much for the support. Uh, really appreciate it. Brilliant brilliancy, says AC Mullane. Jerusalem Ridge is unfortunately a Bill Monroe tune, so it's copyrighted, so I can't play it. Or uh, I would get, YouTube would flag this video and things would get messy. But uh, I wish I could do Jerusalem Ridge. It's a great tune. <laughs> AZ says, Baron has been practicing known as cheating in these parts. I like it. <laughs> yeah, sitting by a campfire. It's too cold here to be sitting by a campfire. It's like, ooh, it's it's down around 10 degrees up here in Maine and the wind's blowing and I walked into town this morning and came back and thought my nose was going to freeze off. All right, Zach, you're here. Good to, good to have you here. Sorry, I missed you. I'm a little behind on the chat, so I didn't get to you right away. Uh, Lonesome Moonlight Waltz. I don't know. I, I know the tune, but I never play it. Uh, that'd be a great one to work on. It's a beautiful tune. Another one that's kind of slow and lonesome. <laughs> I think it's actually also a waltz that I've never really thought about. I've really been enjoying Bill Monroe's My Last Days on Earth from his album Masters of Bluegrass. Um, it's in this wacky tuning where he's got his strings split tuned. So one of his E strings is a C sharp and one is an E and he's got his A somewhere weird too. Look up that. It's a really wacky recording but it's super beautiful and I, I love the tune. I would love to learn that. Daybreak and Dixie. Ah, uh, I think I don't. I don't. Unfortunately, I don't know Dave Break and Dixie. Yeah, another tune again, but I never play it. Uh. That's Daybreak and Dixie or not? Now that I'm thinking about it, it's got that great little intro. Ba -ba -da -da -da. 
I think that's Daybreak and Dixie, but I can't remember. Could be mixing them up. I, I'm a little out of date on my bluegrass at this point. It's been many years since I've done bluegrass uh, kind of regularly enough to keep all those bluegrass tunes in my head. Where can I find a lesson on that? On on um, brilliancy, uh, Lauren says. Where where can I find a lesson on that? Or or lonesome moonlight. Let me know which tune you're looking for, and I'll see if I can uh, hunt it down for you. Or shoot me an email, mando lessons at mando lessons .com, and I will uh, try to help you find some tabs. A request for rawhide. Uh, again, that's one that I can't quite remember. Maybe I was just playing rawhide. Um, Again, those bluegrass ones really slip away from me. Inexpensive hammered dulcimer. Jeez, I bet those are expensive. I've never looked into buying a hammered dulcimer, but they look like they got a lot of strings and they're complicated. So I bet it's one of those instruments that's maybe uh, hard to come by. I'm sure I'm sure there's a hammered dulcimer forum somewhere. That's what I would do if I was in your situation. Find the hammered dulcimer uh, forum. There's probably a classified section. It's probably full of really friendly people who are just waiting to get other people into hammer dulcimer so look that just google hammer dulcimer forum i'm sure people over there are going to be able to be a lot more help than i am because i don't know the first thing about hammer dulcimers except that my high school biology teacher would play one and play like the beatles on the ha hammer dulcimer and also irish tunes um adventures by chance says i'm still confused with what determines a key the key a song is played in um, in terms of like hearing a song and figuring out what key it's in, often like the last chord that's played, if it goes like, um, marry you someday, that last chord is going to, if it sounds like it really comes home at the end and sounds like a good ending spot, that's often going to be the key of the song. And in terms of like what key a song is traditionally played in, like, oh, here's You Are My Sunshine, how, uh, what what key is that played in in that sense um it really depends on who's singing it um so you know if i'm doing cindy and i try to do it in like d it's way too high for me to sing so i say okay let's try that in g oh to see my cindy lives way down south and that's where it's comfortable for my voice but it's really going to depend on who's singing the song as to what key they're going to be able to do it in or if you're trying to figure out what key a song is in, look for that last kind of chord or phrase in the tune. And um, if it sounds like it's coming home, it's not a 100% uh, fail-proof trick, but that's often a good good way to find things. Okay. <laughs> Zach, I'm glad you're here, but you're kind of a... Uh, I, I see that you're saying hi. I don't know if you're spam or not, but it's getting a little spammy, so... Uh, it's making it a little hard for me to read the comments. <laughs> but let me see if I can catch back up. Hammer dulcimer, rawhide, mountain dulcimer. Okay, key. <laughs> Yeah, Zach might get uh, booted if he doesn't hold off on the highs. Trip to Ireland. It was great. Back in May, I went to Ireland. Um, it was super fun. I played a lot of music. Ended up playing, went to the uh, Baltimore, what was it called? Baltimore Fiddle Fair? I can't even remember anymore. Uh, way down in about as southwest as you can get in Ireland. It was super awesome. Great. Great time to uh, get out there. I hope to go back someday soon. Sierra's Waltz. Don't know it. Brilliancy. Amazing. Cool. Yeah, that's such a great... Check out Sam Bush's version of, of Brilliancy if you haven't heard it. Also, on formerly Prayer Home Companion, now live from here, I think he... I think Sam Bush was on there. Or maybe there's a YouTube video of uh, Chris Thiele and Sam Bush playing Brilliancy. Yeah, I don't think it is live from here. Um, there's, look up Sam Bush and Chris Thiele playing Brilliancy. 
Chris Thiele does a beautiful little harmony line over the whole thing with all those acrobatics. It's really lovely. Indian Ada Woodchuck as a lesson. I don't, I, I know I've played that tune. I don't know it off the top of my head, um, but I'll see if I can get that one out there. What is a good beginner mandolin? So I'm not sponsored by Kentucky. I do have some uh, affiliate links in my, um, in the description of these videos, just because I, um, so if you click on them and buy stuff through like Amazon, I'll get a, a couple bucks here and there, but uh, not sponsored by anyone at this point, but I do recommend Kentucky's. That's sort of, uh, they're really kind of high quality for what they are. I've got a whole video on the Kentucky KM 150. I recommend getting it through a website like Elderly or the Mandolin Store because they're going to come set up nicely. A couple hundred bucks. Um, or see if you can find one on Craigslist. They're often floating around. Um, that's miles beyond my first mandolin, which was very hard to play. and not a, I don't even remember what it was, but yeah, it was like the only mandolin in the music store near my house. And I kind of fought with it for years. But, um, yeah, I like the Kentuckys. They're really everything these days. If, if you pick it up and it sounds good, it is good. Um, if you can get it in your hands before you buy it, even better. Uh, Michael says, talking about your Ellis, and I know you have a Collings Mandola. How do you compare the build and attention to detail between them? I've always thought of them as cousins. Yeah, I mean, they're both built in Austin, Texas. I mean, they're both, like just about as perfect as they I would never be able to build anything nearly as perfect as either of them especially with a you know I, I play a styles which don't have like the f scroll which is often like the hardest part of of an of an f style mandolin build but both both are just incredible fit and finish uh you know I, I can't find fault with any of them really Listening to Star of the County Down, this this week's player long track and find I actually grew up in a localized version. Cool. Um Yeah, yeah, it's um I forget it's uh there's some other name for it. Um Star of the County. Dun, 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 dun. Uh yeah, there's some earlier name for the tune of Star of the County Down. Eastman is good, yep. Um, Kentucky, what else is there? There's the, Some of the lore mandolins are good. Not the old lores, but the modern company, the lore. Bill Cheatham, yeah. I love Bill Cheatham. Play a little bit of that. Kia A, nice kind of bluegrass and old time crossover tune. Still getting used to the old uh, foot box there. All right, I think I'm. Oh, I'm almost caught up with the chat here. That's good. Uh, about an hour's up, but there was so much technical difficulties. I'll go a little bit over today. Um, let me catch up with the chat here. I don't have a lesson on Daybreak and Dixie. I'll have to look into that one. Um, Bluegrass Stomp, I think, is again a. It's pretty much a blues, but I think it's technically a Bill Monroe composition. So I can't do that one. Um, I'll look into Daybreak and Dixie. Um, that might be trad. Um, oh, Kia A. Oh, okay.
yeah, I, I would believe that that's an A. It's really fun to slide around on that, too. <laughs> you can really go being a little sloppy, but... Definitely something to play around. Mike, uh, Mike Compton is the master of the, the slidey mandolin. I love his style. Cool. Zach sounds like he's got some, uh, no problem. But, uh, yeah, just, this is Zach says, sorry for all the text. No problem. Um, just kind of plugs up the chat, but glad to have you here. Sounds like you got a bunch of great instruments under your belt. I wish I could play saxophone. Zach says he plays guitar, saxophone, mandolin, ukulele, and piano. That's awesome. Um, squirrel hunters, future lesson on squirrel hunters. Definitely. That would be a lot of fun. Thank you again, Lauren, for the, uh, Yes, that was Bill Cheatham that I was just playing. Assuming that's what uh, the... Ooh. <laughs> yep, that's Bill Cheatham. Thank you so much for the super chat donation, Lauren. Appreciate it. Uh, I don't do personalized email uh, or like personalized lessons at this point. Whoops, I'm hitting too many buttons. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, I don't have time to do, like, individual lessons. But uh, what I would do is uh, ask over on Mandolin Cafe and see if anyone over there has links to a, a lesson on Daybreak and Dixie. Um, you know, I probably won't get to it. I have to check and sort of see if it's something I can do because of copyright. And uh, it takes a while to get things actually onto my site. It could be months or years. But see if uh, people over at M the Mandolin Cafe forum, you could put a post over there and say, hey, does anyone have any... Um, suggestions on how I go about learning Daybreak and Dixie, and I'm sure somebody over there can help you out. Cool. Awesome. Um, so, I think I'm caught up with the chat. Let's do our weekly... And it's so long ago that I've totally forgotten, but I'm going to pull it up here. Uh, I like to do a little kind of play-along. And right now, we are going to do this week's play along which is da, 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 da. oh boy we got ooh, episode four I want, oh oh it's upside down thank you denise it's upside down um <laughs> next week's jam is oh star of the county down great that's why somebody was mentioning it um yeah let's so let's do a little star of the county down I gotta look at a, I don't remember what key I played it in. We're gonna do it as a march and as a waltz. Let's start with the waltz. Um, and I'm just gonna make sure I find it in the right key here. So um okay, so we were doing it in A minor. So, I will zoom in to the close-up one. And so the way this works is... Actually, no, I won't zoom in for this. It's nice to be able to sort of see what's going on. Uh, every week, at the end of the live stream, we do a little kind of back and forth where we play a tune together. This week's is Star of the County Down. We're actually going to do it as a waltz and then as a mark. I'll lead you through it, don't worry. Um, and then we'll pick one for next week. But um, these are a lot of fun. I won't do it too fast, um, you know, especially it's not a fast tune to begin with, so no need to play it faster than it than it needs to be. But, um, yeah, so get your mandolin out, get tuned up, and we will play a little bit of Star of the County Down. Sounds like this. through I'll play the melody and then I'll play the chords and you can play the melody and you can play the chords behind when I play the melody go back and forth a bunch of times at some point we'll switch into a march I'll lead you through it it'll be great so here we go we've got the star of the county down and maybe I will zoom in just so you can see my hands a little bit so starting out as a waltz nice waltz tempo waltzes are in three
and it goes right into the B part. stuff so i hope you enjoyed that that's a fun one i haven't played that tune in a long time so it was a little hard to remember how all this goes let me catch up with the chat but uh yeah um so we do that every week i hope you see you next week uh if you have a request throw it in the chat right now i wish i could pick them all but uh usually something that's not too not too crazy and something that's on my website um so people can learn it and wherever you're at with the tune, even if a tune is picked that you already know, um, see if you can work on a little improvisation on top of that or double stops, things like that. Wherever you're uh, at with the tune, even if you've never heard it before, just see if you can get a couple notes by next week. And see you next time. I'll catch up with the chat while I get some suggestions in the, in the chat. Let it be. I'm not going to play Let it be because it's a uh, copyrighted tune, unfortunately. 
Thank you, Denise, for putting out the custodian. You saw it coming. And I was already looking at the other. So there is also, if you go to my website and you look at the uh, the live Q&A button on the side, you can actually find an index that Denise put together for all of these live streams. This is number 39, almost 40, 40 of these things now. Um, and they're all kind of linked up so you can search them by tune and stuff. Find whatever you're looking for. Do you have plans to add rhythm chords to each song on the lesson? So I have um, kind of all of that in different places. In the tablature and sheet music, I have the chords written above the melody so you can play through them. I also have play along tracks for all of my lessons. So as I'm play as um, you can hear me play the melody while I play the chords, or you can turn off the melody so it's just me playing the chords. Or you can hear me just play the melody while you're working on the chords. And those are linked underneath each of the tune lessons on my website. Um, and you can find them over there. They're all through Bandcamp. They're free to stream and just a couple bucks to download. So you can slow them down or speed them up. But there's a slow version and a fast version of each one. Unless it's a slow tune to begin with. In which case there isn't a fast tune. Ah, red-haired, have we done red-haired boy? That's a good question. But yeah, thank you all so much. So let's see. Yeah, I'm going to just check the Google Drive document here real quick and see if we've done red-haired boy. I don't think we have. So yeah, assuming that, yeah, let's do Red Haired Boy. That's a great tune. Kind of a classic old time and bluegrass tune that gets played in both traditions. So that would be a great one for next week. So next week, Red Haired Boy. Um, thank you all so much. Thank you for the super chat donations throughout the hour and a bit. Sorry for the technical difficulties. I'll probably trim this one down so you don't have all that crazy technical difficulties at the beginning you might lose a couple questions but thank you all so much again these happen now that it's the new year um much more regularly i was gone for like three weeks or so but now they happen um they'll happen most saturdays at least until summertime comes and things get crazy again have a great weekend see you next time thanks so much <laughs>